think that amongst all the videos on capital management, this one is the most exciting because we are going to be comparing three companies, um, Berkshire Hathaway, Swiss Re, and the Hartford. They all have very different risk characteristics. Uh, the volatility in each line is uh, in the same line across the companies is different, correlations are different, and so on. The capital allocation is very different, volatility is very different. So let me open up the database and let me go to the three companies, the composite model for each. I'm going to go to Berkshire Hathaway, um, Swiss Re, you can see I've got quite a few other companies there. Um, if your company is not listed on our website and the study is not on our website, just send us an email and we'll be very uh, pleased to uh, do a study based on Schedule P data, data of your company. And the Hartford, so let's open them all. Let's tile vertically, so we just see that let's run the model for each. Uh, for Swiss Re, I've got a model called Good. Um, timing wasn't really that good for Hartford for a model called Good and for Berkshire Hathaway uh, we'll use Good New I mean it's just the same as Good but anyway let's use Good New and let's compare now the trend structures for, each, uh, for the lines of business and show that they're different so if we go to HOFO um, I guess some similarity for that. Actually, it's a pretty short tail, isn't it? It decays very quickly. There's some similarity there. What about in terms of trend structures along the calendar years? Whoops, they are pretty similar. And accident years, I think that's where there's some differences. And what about process variability? different events of the normal distribution. Each one has different process variability. In fact, the process variability for Swiss Re is pretty large. What about if we go to, say, workers' comp for each? Workers' comp, that's one. Uh, workers' comp here, they're not in the same order, unfortunately. That's another. And what about workers' comp here? Okay, well, you can see they're all very different structures um, and process variability. Correlations are also very different. Let's do a forecast for each. And we're going to load, good combined. Okay. Uh, now we're going to load the same thing for um, good combined. That's for Hartford. And then we're going to load a uh, good combined, good new combined for the um, Berkshire Hathaway. And why don't we study immediately just the forecast summers? Well, let's look at coefficient of variation of the aggregate. Are they 23.89%, 4%, that's the Hartford, and Swiss Re is 9%. It's the same as the um, as uh, this one on the right, Swiss Re. You can see SL for Swiss Re, HF for Hartford, BH for Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, so Swiss Re in terms of coefficient of variation is the same as Berkshire Hathaway. Another interesting thing we might want to look at is the calendar year payment stream. Calendar year payment streams, which are very important in terms of risk capital allocation. One of the things I haven't shown you is you also need to updo allocate risk capital to the um, to the lines of business. You also have to allocate them to the calendar years. So here's a risk capital allocation to uh, calendar years. Um, but first, before, before we do that, which I should have done also in a previous video, well, let's see how much the company pays by the end of calendar year 2012. So 
So in the aggregate, uh, Berkshire Hathaway pays 90.9% um, 2012 for 78% for the Hartford and Swiss Re 84.57% 84 what about if you look at different lines of business so why don't we move to workers comp for instance we've got to workers comp we've got to workers comp and we've got to workers comp here Let's find workers' comp there, and let's go to 12. And for Swiss Re, it's um, sorry, I might have been looking at the wrong 81.47%, 12, 66% for the Hartford, 12, 62.4%. So each one presents a different picture in terms of how much money this is the mean. You set, need to set aside how much. This is without discounting. You can also discount. You need to set aside in each calendar year. So the distributions are very different. What about then the risk capital? Uh, so the risk capital by calendar year, that's what it's like. Uh, this is on top of the mean then. The risk capital, this is for Berkshire Hathaway, for Workers' Comp, Hartford, Workers' Comp, a bit similar, and um, Swiss Re. Well, that's a little bit different, okay? These are percentages, percentages. If you look at the aggregate, if you look at the aggregate with capital allocation by calendar year, which we failed to do in the first video, so we're doing it here. Never mind. Very different pictures in terms of how much risk capital. This is the capital you need on top of the main. There's a distribution for the mean reserves that we looked at before, and then you also have a distribution of how much risk capital by as a percentage on, on top of that mean that you need to allocate by calendar. So you can actually see that each each um, company is is in fact uh, different. Uh, what about um, coefficient of variations, if we go to LRBs here, Berkshire Hathaway, as far as workers' comp, only writes, it's only really a small proportion of its total business, um, but it's got the highest CV. Um, if we go to LRB comparisons, uh, workers' comp, for the Hartford, obviously, it's the last proportion of its business, and I, my guess is it doesn't have such a... It's got a pretty small CV, but but larger than the average. Um, CV of 3.64%. And for Swiss Re, workers' comp, is 9.8% of the business, and it's got a CV of, wow, 33.86%. Uh, it's not the largest CV, but it's got a pretty large CV. Hartford's got the lowest. Well, I guess, you know, insurance companies who aren't workers' comp might write excess and so on, so you expect a larger CV. What about uh, capital allocation, uh, risk capital allocation? for each one of those lines of business. Um, now, what do I need to do that? I've got to go to summary data sets. And um, summary data sets, risk capital allocation graph. Well, that's the one. That's the graph. Risk capital allocation graph. So workers comp gets 13% there. Workers' comp gets 48.8% uh, risk capital allocation. Well, the risk capital allocation depends on the variance formula. So given that um, Hartford writes a large proportion of its business is workers' comp, it would require a lot of risk capital. And then we've got uh, we've got uh, Berkshire Hathaway 
which is only 6%. What, would, what if we just do a simulation now um, for the aggregate and do some comparisons for just the reserve? Why don't we just do 1,000 simulations? And then we'll do the same thing for the Hartford to find distributions of aggregates of log normals that are correlated. And here's another one, which is Berkshire Hathaway. That's called them vertically. Um, let's look at. This is capital graphs, which are going to be improved with time. So what do we find? Um, are we looking at the 99th percentile? So let's look at the 95th. can't work out at the moment. We'll do the forecast for each. Um, Berkshire Hathaway has got a mean of 23.898 with um, risk capital of 3.7 million. I meant 3.7 billion. Okay, so that's um, Berkshire Hathaway. Whereas the Hartford, a lot of its lines of business basically because we're looking at that data had zeros. We didn't model those. So with the Hartford, we're not modeling as many lines of business as we are with Berkshire Hathaway and Swiss Re. Um, it's total risk capital at 95%. It doesn't really need all that much risk capital. Okay, uh, it's, what is it? It's less than a tenth. And Swiss Re, it's got 12 billion, 12.8 billion mean, it needs a risk capital of 2 billion. So if we were looking at percentage of the aggregate, let's look at that there, here. I really want to look at this one there. If you look at the aggregate of all the lines of business and you add up the mean plus the risk capital. Um, so the mean plus the risk capital, that's, that, that's say the sum of the two. What percentage is the risk capital for Berkshire Hathaway? It's 13.42%. For um, Hartford, it's 5.75%. Not so much risky business. And for Swiss Re, it's 13.97. So Swiss Re is 13.97 versus the um, Berkshire Hathaway, which is very similar, 13.42. You can also write reports, which we're going to do in the next video. So there's a very easy way of comparing companies, very easy way of comparing the volatility, their trend structure. Some have positive trends along the calendar years, some have zero trends, uh, some have changing trends, and a lot of information that we can produce by composite models. It's very easy to update the composite triangle group. Um, I mean, one of the things I can do is go to Berkshire Hathaway and update it. Let me write this down. So I'll do that. So I'll just create a composite TG. Now I'll expand it. And I'll call it BH1. But when I do that, I've got both. OK, so let's open both now. One is expanded.
Now the only difference between the two is that the one that's been expanded, BH1, in the uh, triangle groups, if I go to triangle group cal, the uh, triangle that's been expanded, the next color is data zero. It hasn't been filled in. And that can also be done automatically through the com. So if we go to models and run the same models, um, say good, new in each, we should get the same displays where because the last the, next, the last calendar year that we just added is kind of missing. So if you look at the displays, the residual one, you can see the model displays are identical. Let's look at PPA, PPA1, and they look identical. If you look at the residuals, Uh, what you'll find is that the 2007 year is missing in the expanded or updated um, data set. So the, the capacity, the ability to manage all your long tiles, lines of business with one composite model that produces a wealth of output, a wealth of information, uh, you can monitor it, uh, you can do forecast tracking just with one model. And there is one of our clients, I think it's Transatlantic Re, that actually runs uh, one composite model, 40 lines of business. Each one is, um, I think it's 20 accident years by 40 half years. So it's pretty straightforward. And a lot of it can be done from outside the system using COM. Thank you.